Hey everybody, this is David Skrika. So we're going to talk about two things in today's two things. Sorry, in today's stock chart of the day, we're going to take a look at gold. Of course, gold, as I mentioned um, on the weekend's update, got whacked. So, but we're going to look at something a little different with gold. We're going to look at the seasonality of it because um, uh, what's interesting is this is is it here? This is a great website. It's called Equity Clock. It's run by a, a guy I know. I consider him a friend, even though I haven't talked to him in a long time. Uh, Don Vialu. I actually spoke at a little event Don put on in, in Oakville, Ontario, um, a few years ago. And um, 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 uh, so anyhow, you can see that the April, so gold tends to, um, so the, the, he has all these great seasonal charts of everything. So maybe we'll, we'll do maybe um, like a season. Maybe, maybe we'll just do it this week. Maybe this will be the seasonal week, you know? So, um, you know, especially because now we've entered the sell and may go away period for equities, but I digress. So you can see that um, gold futures tend to peak here in April trend lower into June, and then have their actually their strongest three months of the year in July, August, um, actually too much of the year, I should say, in July and August. So we're right here, like we're right about here, I guess it would be, and that would be mid, basically that would be next week. So we could be in this bottoming, so maybe gold can see a little more weakness, kind of break that short-term support, you know, shake people out. I'm not too worried about this support level because well, maybe it has a uh, sideways consolidation, but if, I think if, if we do break the support, it'd be something like it happened in October. You know, we'd get probably maybe another week of selling. Maybe gold goes down to 2200, 2250, and then moves higher. And then, of course, at that point, you can see what happened with the RSI here back in October. That would probably happen here as well. And that'd be a real buy signal. And I think that's a good thing because, again, the gold stocks basically went straight up, you know, for most of uh you know march and april so they probably need some kind of consolidation and i know many of you probably don't have the positions you want to and you could use that weakness to add to your positions and and because and gold stocks are were so beaten up etc even if there's a drawdown in the market i'm not as worried about the member and one reason gold stocks crashed in 2008 was because they had basically gone up with the market from 2003 to 2007 well that hasn't been the case okay in the last few months, yes, but gold stocks have really lagged the market since 2020, 2021, when the market, you know, has had this huge move to new highs. So, uh, so, so that gold seasonality is very interesting. We're now entering this here. So I would definitely look at the, whatever your favorite gold stock is, if it's a large cap or you just want to buy an ETF, definitely would look at it here in the coming weeks. We can see how this seasonality kind of plays out here. And let's face it, it's played out to the T here. There, there's the April top. You know, now the decline into June, it's like totally played out. You know, it's it's pretty amazing. You know, so um, and like I said, that, that not only not only are we entering a, a strong period, that basically the two strongest months for gold stocks are actually that July August period. January February is close, but July August tends to be the two strongest of them, and then there tends to be a consolidation usually in September October, and then a final move higher into the end of the year, and actually into about that March to April period. Um, that's ten how, how these things tend to kind of trade. That basically cut a lull in the fall, a lull in the spring, and basically strength in the summer and strength into the in winter. Uh, that That's usually how um, uh, gold plays out. So this isn't technically one of my sponsor companies, but it has to do with a sponsor company. Palisade um, um, uh, uh, basically was involved in some kind of lawsuit. These kind of things happen. Uh, and, and basically they're they're going to basically issue this this company um you know a whole bunch of uh, newfound gold uh, uh um uh, two two point eight million shares of newfound gold um um uh, and you know actually actually three point six million so that's not like a huge deal newfound gold I think has that's just over one percent of the float so I think it has about two hundred fifty million shares outstanding if I'm correct. It just it just pays apart because of course Palisade owns a bunch of newfound gold, and we can see Palisade has actually rallied on the news. Um, so Palisade is interesting because it is a holding company. There, there's really no pure junior um, uh, funds out there, um, but you know because juniors tend to be so small and illiquid, it's tough for a mutual fund or a closed end fund to own it. So Palisade is a way to do it. And of course, it's you know it's Colin Cattell's deal. So it owns the deals he owns. It owns Nevada King, it owns Newfound Gold. It owns um, uh, a Golden Planet, which should at some point, I would assume this year, with Gold Strong be, uh, come out trading. And they announced a buyback 
a few months ago. That was his big move up here. And what's interesting, though, this is still trading at a big discount. I think over 50% discount to its NAV. So essentially, you're like it's a way you're buying newfound gold, which is um about an, an eight to nine hundred million dollar market cap. You're buying newfound gold at like a four hundred million dollar market cap essentially. So you're getting to buy newfound gold at, at, at a big discount. And this company also owns, like I said, Golden Planet, Collins New Deal. And Golden Planet is 90 cents uh, pre-IPO. And I'm sure it will come up much higher than that in a strong gold market, especially with Collins got multiple deals with north of $100 million market caps uh, and only has 60 million shares outstanding. Essentially, if if if, if Golden Planet were at the same um, market cap of Nevada King, it would be about a 2 to $3 stock. If it was the same market cap as Newfound Gold, <laughs> it'd be like a $10 stock. Actually, like more like $12. So I don't know that. So maybe the truth will be somewhere in the middle or the, 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 the trade will be somewhere in the middle. But this is like, again, an interest, excellent way. And again, if you're someone who can't do these deals, you're not accredited, or you just don't have the capital to do it or don't want to do a pre-IPO, again, they'll prob my price in Golden Planet is 90 cents. So it'll be a way to buy, I'm sure, their prices as well. Probably some of it even lower, you know, because usually the insiders get in, you know, even lower prices. So um, new you know, at the minimum, though, you're going to get in at 90 cents. And it's a way, to, again, to participate in, say, buying the pre-IPO in Golden Planet and buying some of Colin's other deals. And usually what happens in a bull market in these things is, you know, you can sit a dollar sixty at the bottom of the market. Um, you know, this thing was trading at probably a three quarters discount in NAV. Now it's more like 60 percent and it can move up to NAV. So you could get the, the fact that like not, not only does the stocks that it owns go up, but it it's it's a uh, discounted NAV shrinks. So I'm going to leave it at that. So that that, that I think that solving that uh, lawsuit was very positive right now. And again, it didn't really cost Palisades any money. They're just basically issuing shares in newfound gold. And there's a four month lockup here, too. So these shares won't hit the market uh, right away. So. Um, and like I said, when we were looking at newfound gold of having like an 850, 900 million dollar market cap, 14 million dollars worth of shares, it's not really that big of a deal. So I thought I'd just leave it at that. Gold seasonality probably tells us that we could continue to see weakness here for the next few weeks and then move higher maybe later into until later in the year. Um, so I'm gonna leave it at that and um I hope everyone's enjoyed this. Yeah, I think we'll make this a seasonality week. Uh we'll look at the seasonality of some bonds, stocks. Uh, maybe some other um, uh, commodities. It'd be fun to do and, you know, kind of promote uh, my friend's uh, uh, Don's uh, website here. And because Don is a great guy. Um, he actually has an ETF that that trades based on the seasonality trade. And um, he's a really nice man um, and um, a, a good person. So uh, we're, we're going to leave this here and that's it.